Hello, my name is Tom Riley and I am a retired NASA engineer. I now coach young people in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, at the middle and high school level. I take great pains in discussing the current problems of human society that will define society's needs over the span of their life's work. Needs are the starting point for all good technical design. The most well known of these problems is our climate crisis but there are several others at this level. I also take pride in basing my discussions on real data. Recently the data for global warming, the level of CO2, and methane in the atmosphere, have become available for the spring of 2019. This data is from NOAA's, Earth System Research Laboratory and covers March, April, and May 2019. This data is very disturbing to me. The data shows that the three parameters critical to global warming are all markedly higher and growing rapidly. This means our climate crisis is coming on much faster than thought only a few years ago and the time available for corrective action is now cut short. This then sets up my dilemma on what I should ethically teach my STEM students, should they take on our climate crisis head on, or, start the planning for a sustainable society for a hothouse earth. Either way, time is not on our side. What I have been telling my students is that they must face three great challenges of historic moment, one, our climate crisis, many of today's populated areas will seasonally become too hot and dry for human habitation and the seas will be rising to levels that will demand immense effort and expense. Generally, the weather will simply not be what we have learned to expect from our long experience and may no longer suit our needs for critical efforts like farming. 2. Population peaking the current best estimates are that the human population of the Earth will rise to about 10 billion around 2050. It will then peak and then drop to a level the Earth can sustain. This transition is quite natural and is now on autopilot. Even if population were our only problem, it would still cause enormous social upheaval. 3. Technology Revolution The first industrial revolution was powered by steam. Our new industrial revolution is being powered by data. With the advent of computers, the internet, AI, and robotics, people have developed enormous new power, but that power must be both controlled and directed. What I have been telling my students is that we must harness the power of the third problem, the new industrial revolution, to help us address the human problems generated by all three. Moreover, while addressing these problems, we must design a human society for a sustainable earth. No small task, and a task that a responsible person could devote their life's work to. The latest data tells a new and quite different story. It is quite jarring. Looking at the global atmospheric CO2 graph, and knowing that the global temperature tracks the CO2 very well. Please note the small upticks in the atmospheric CO2 data for the years 2016 and 2019, circled in red. Something very dangerous is beginning to show and we must now plan an appropriate response based on this new data. If this additional CO2 in the atmosphere is caused by human activity, there is at least the possibility of our actions reversing the upward trend. If instead, our actions have triggered natural forces that are now taking over and are increasing CO2 all by themselves, the process may have moved out of our control. Such events are called passing a tipping point. The upticks for 2016 and 2019 look very like what one would expect at the start of such a transition. The year 2016 was an exceptional year in that it was an intense El Niño so it might just be a blip in the data. The year 2019 is a more normal year so a repeat of the jump in the data is a major concern. The question is whether or not this bump in the data is the marker for the beginning of the historic transition to a hothouse earth. The data for 2020, due out in one year, might tell the tale, but dare we wait? Over the eons, the earth's climate has repeatedly demonstrated a very stable hothouse phase with temperatures about 6 degrees Celsius above our normal and with no ice even at the poles. It was in this phase for most of the three ages of the dinosaurs and for about half the time since. The much cooler glacial cycles that we have been in for most of our evolution, are simply unusual in the long view. 
Estimates of the CO2 atmospheric concentration during a hothouse phase are around 1,200 parts per million, four times higher than the 300 parts per million typical for glacial cycles. The difference is about the amount of CO2 currently stored in permafrost and in methane hydrate in shallow northern seas. Methane, CH4, itself is a strong greenhouse gas, up to 74 times as bad as CO2, but once loose in the atmosphere, it oxidizes to CO2 and water in about 12 years. This makes it the shock troops of the greenhouse gases, the one to watch for rapid effects. The question then is has our planet warmed enough to release the stored methane without farther help from humans? A check of the methane in the atmosphere shows it on a steady rise. This reinforces the concern. The global map of temperatures for the spring of 2019 again shows the highest increases in the Arctic. In fact, for this spring, the warmest areas match very well the areas where the methane is now immobile. We now appear to be on the verge of losing our opportunity for control of Earth's climate. The climate transition may be about to switch to autopilot, much to our consternation. So where are we in this unfolding drama and what should we do now? It is important to note that all the great human civilizations rose up during a warm interglacial period. We simply do better with a little heat. Also, note that the Earth has a stable hothouse climate phase that it has entered many times and remained there for millions of years while supporting complex plant and animal life. The Earth itself, and its life, are not in danger. The Earth will be just fine, thank you very much. That said, Climate transitions can be deadly to existing ecosystems, and rapid transitions can turn deadly fast. For example, the large animals on Earth today are quite different from those in the established biospheres of any hothouse Earth. When was the last time you ran into a terror bird? If human society must go through such a quick transition, we need a plan. An early part of that plan must include action to train our young people to address the myriad new problems they must now face. Not to make such a plan, is to give up without a fight. I for one am not going down without a fight. This then brings me back to my dilemma in training STEM students. Do I keep training them to tackle the problems of our climate crisis, working very hard to prevent it? Alternatively, do I start teaching them to face the transition to a hothouse earth? At this time, I do not even have a strategic plan for such a transition to a sustainable civilization on a hothouse earth, let alone teaching materials. Training up people to take on a historically great problem like this takes time. Even now, time is scarce. We need to hit the ground running. In fact, we need to develop our plan for a sustainable civilization on a hothouse earth while simultaneously training our people to implement it. Starting right now? Perhaps I am making way too much out of a couple twists on a graph, but somebody has to be the one who looks way out ahead and somebody has to start the process of making a plan. Perhaps that is my life's work. For now, I am in watch mode. Watch like a hawk, but plan to. I will continue to teach my STEM students to take on our climate crisis while developing a plan for the possible climate transition. Forget settlements on Mars, let's design settlements for a hothouse Earth. Forget shoot em up games, let's design an organized retreat from rising seas. Please tell us your reactions to our dilemma in the notes below. Our current projects show our recent efforts to address elements of our climate crisis, which we plan to continue for now. Our little group, the Big Moon Dig, is working on innovative ideas for a grassroots space program and to design ways to aid young people in finding their life's work that will help address our climate crisis. We have a new book out, see link below, which uses short stories as an educational aid, narrative thinking and storytelling for problem solving in science education. We have also written a TV or web production screenplay, Summer is coming. It is about, young people in a virtual family, who are faced with our climate crisis and unsure of themselves, get into action, and, with the help of an artificial intelligence, mold their life's work to be of real value in our challenging future. Please contact us, contact information below, 
If you are interested in any of these projects or have ideas on a society for a sustainable hothouse earth. Enjoy, Janet A. and Tom Riley The Big Moon Dig.